Using Fritzing Advanced Level There are hundreds of videos showing you how to use Fritzing i.e. grab a part and place it in the view change it in Inspector and connect it up but they're just the basic things This video will be about the advanced things and the special features no one mentions and the common problems in the forum The first common problem is My Inspector doesn't work i.e. nothing is selectable and that's because they have a part in the bin selected not a part in the view if I now select the part in the view, all the options are available. Also, some parts have a lot of options, but generally most of them don't. Generally, modified core parts will have less options than their parents. An important function is the search button. It's this magnifying glass above core bin. If you can't find it, try this arrow button to get to the top of all the bins. The thing about search is, it's only good as the terms you can think of. The usual procedure of search is you look up the part number first, like MAX9926. And if that doesn't find it, you use a general description, like VR sensor. And if that doesn't find it, you start looking up footprints, like QSOP16. And if there's no part in Fritzing, you'd have to search the Fritzing forum first, and then online search for any term that you can think of. People make personal parts and host it themselves, so they could be anywhere. Another feature of bins is, if you open someone else's sketch and they have made parts that you don't have, the sketch will automatically open the temporary bin with those parts in it. And that means if you need those parts, you can get the parts from the sketch. You can right-click on the part and export it, then re-import it. Or the quicker, right-click on the selected part in the sketch, add to bin, then my parts. Another feature is file open. Not only can it open a sketch, extension .fzz, but it can load a part, .fzpz, into mine bin. The first thing we'll cover is pin indicator colors. If you drag a part into a view, you'll notice the indicator pins are red. But if you connect it to something, the pins turn green. Note how when we connect this wire, one pin turns green. And on top of that, there's another feature that shows connections. If you click on a pin, anything connected to it will turn yellow. This will tell you what's connected, or the nearest part to connect to. And if you have a bend point, you can use that too. Next we have the common problem of people trying to connect to wires along their length in breadboard view. Here we think we have a connection because we have a wire touching another wire, but when we check the connection, we can see it's not connected, i.e. the new wire's connection points didn't turn yellow. The other indicator is that connected wires have green tips, not red. And that's because you can't make this connection in real life, and Fritzing mimics real life. It seems Fritzing was intended for children to copy what they see, so copying something that can't be done in real life will be confusing. It's the reason why Arduinos don't plug into breadboards in Fritzing. Arduinos have their second header moved by half a hole, so it'll never plug into a breadboard. Be aware that some people make pseudo parts that fit into Fritzing's breadboard, even though they don't in real life. And that means you physically can't build that circuit the way it's shown. If you want to make a simplified representation of a circuit, like the simplified wiring diagrams found in automotive workshop manuals, you can put traces on traces to hide the fact that they're not actually connected at that point. Notice how this red wire shows it's connected properly everywhere, but when we move this bend point, we can see it's faux connected. Representative diagrams are basically just schematics with pictures, so they are more for conveying an idea than to copy exactly as shown. It looks like these type of diagrams are not intended by the makers of Fritzing, but I guess if you know the difference, they might be okay. Next is special tools. Each view has special tools that only work in that view, and these are found at the bottom of the core bin. There is breadboard tools, schematic tools, and PCB tools, plus some special tools. The special tools in breadboard are perfboard and stripboard, where you can cut and join the traces by clicking between the holes. Perf and stripboard kind of works, but not perfectly. One problem is, if you grab a standard front view part, it can obscure parts behind it. This has prompted people to start making top view parts. Unfortunately, there's not a comprehensive list of top view parts yet. Another problem is, you can't shrink a part shorter than it's drawn. Standard parts are drawn five holes apart, but in real life, you can go shorter. You can select shorter parts in the inspector, but that's only for the PCB view. The breadboard view stays the same. Basically, you can't make a resistor shorter, or you won't be able to fit the colored bands on it. Another special button in breadboard view is text. Just type the words in inspector. And if you want, you can change the font color and size. And the last button is to import custom images. There's also a breadboard button in case you want to add more of those. Another thing you can do is right click on a part and show part label. Then right click on the label and select what you want to show. Another thing, you're not limited by the numbers in the drop down boxes in Inspector. Sometimes entering numbers is a bit fiddly, so put your numbers in front first and then delete the rest. Let's change this number to 666. 
you can fudge a part by only displaying the part number because whatever you type in inspector will be the only thing showing i.e. you can grab a generic non-specific part show the part label and only display the part number then just put a specific number in inspector and now it's a specific part manipulating parts if you grab a part with bendable legs you can just grab a leg and pull it to where you want to connect to but if you want a wire from the pin just hold the alt key down click on the pin and then drag your wire to where you want to connect to you can also go from the breadboard to the pin without pressing any shortcut key if you connect a part with bendable legs to something like a breadboard it will keep its shape and disconnect until you reconnect it but if you hold the alt key down when you move it it'll stay connected I don't use curved lines but if you want to you just hold the control key down and click on a pin and then drag it or you can set curved wires globally with edit preferences control click also works for wires and if you select the part you can rotate here and flip here you can also box select but only if you start the box off the breadboard then hold the control key and click on the parts you want to deselect then you can do the usual functions duplicate move etc a word about duplicate duplicate pastes in the middle of the screen so it might be an idea to move a clear space to the middle i use the shortcut of control d to duplicate you can change wire color by right clicking on it or using the inspector you can also put bands on the wires like this purple one view is the usual mouse wheel zoom in zoom out and to move is the usual click wheel on an empty space and drag or press the space bar and drag but the best when parts are scattered is view fit to window as far as laying out breadboards i don't like to put anything over the top of part indicator pins i don't want anything obscuring the indicator pin connection status color which shows green for connected and red for not connected plus it's easy to click on a pin and test a connection when there's nothing over the top of it that's why i run my wires between holes it's quite easy to put wires between the holes if you use the snap function before you start grab the breadboard and move it so it snaps to the grid then just go view, set grid size, and make it 50 thou. Then whenever you grab a wire, it'll fit right in between. Part 2 will look at schematic view.